Okay, this is the presentation that I tried to screencast to you that day on my computer, and I couldn't do it. And I'm just going to do it really quickly. It was kind of related to the bell jar and the feminine mystique, but um, I just love these ads so much I can't help from talking about them. So this is a look at ads geared towards housewives in the 50s and 60s in Britain and America, and to look at how they're marketing these image things to women. Say goodbye to a depression and hello to wine. Tonic wine was presented as like kind of like a healthy wine. It's definitely alcoholic. Um, and it, you know, this was supposed to give you energy and help your depression lift. So if you were feeling depressed, maybe you'd feel better with a glass of wine. Here is a different tonic wine, Buckfast tonic wine, but you can see that this is specifically geared to housewives. Look at the struggles, the groceries, cooking. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to relax with a nice glass of wine <clears throat> to help you cope? This advertisement is even um, more pointed it's all right for him. He gets to go out in the morning and anticipate things in his day. Um, he doesn't have the kind of, you're stuck in an empty house. Uh, have a glass of wine. So this really kind of gets at the issues that Ferdinand is talking in The Feminine Mystique. And it is basically suggesting that women self-medicate. Another wonderful ad from San Sanatogen, tonic wine. Oh man, does it suck having kids? Wouldn't it be better to have a glass of wine? Kids are murder. This will help you cope. Um, this may seem crazy to see alcohol marketed to housewives in this way to deal with the issues of being a housewife, but if I think, if you think about the kind of things that happen right now culturally around mommies and wine, the kind of jokes and t-shirts and all kinds of things, I think um, we don't see it necessarily in advertisements, but I think we certainly see it in our cultural discourse that being a mom is hard and wine makes it easier. So definitely the idea that you have to self-medicate to deal with the strain of being a wife and a mother. Um, I think Fredan alluded to Milltown in The Feminine Mystique. Milltown is the first of what they call the minor tranquilizers. These are drugs that could um, sedate you without just you know, putting you into a drooling stupor. Um, you, could, you could have sedation without lack of mental cognition or mental focus. So Milltown is introduced in 1955. By the end of 1956, one out of 20 Americans was taking it or another tranquilizer. 1957, 35 million prescriptions, one for every second of the year. And this is very gendered. Women are the biggest consumers of the new tranquilizers. Twice as many women as men are using tranquilizers. And the following ads all have to deal with tranquilizers of some kind. Here we go. A lot of little things are wrong. Headaches, diarrhea, this rash on my arm. And sometimes I think I don't like being married. Wow. One of those things is not like the other. Why don't you take it? And we see this this girl and we see the, the laundry. Guilt and somatic symptoms and concerns caused by anxiety respond particularly well to Cinequan. You're not happy with your marriage? Take a tranquilizer. When she overreacts to any situation, take a sedative. Take a tranquilizer. You can take this one three to four times a day, right? If you, if you are upset, if you are anxious, drug yourself. 
Why is this woman tired? Probably because she has a lot of dishes to do. But the answer again, a tranquilizer. You can't set her free. Really? Why can't we set this woman free? This woman is literally imprisoned by mops. The, the copy here is just incredible. You can't set her free, but you can help her feel less anxious, right? She can live in a more comfortable prison by using a tranquilizer drug. Ah, if chronic fatigue and mild depression make simple tasks seem this big, Ritalin relieves chronic fatigue. Boy, will it. It's quite a stimulant that depresses and mild depression that fatigues. So um, we start to see um, Ritalin being suggested for some of these things. Again, this uh, poor woman and her vacuum cleaner. Um, Ritalin will relieve apathy. Notice in the next couple of ads how prominently a vacuum cleaner is, is going to play a role. Proved antidepressant effect. This lady is back vacuuming with the help of Dexamil Spansel. Raise the emotional threshold against everyday stresses. A gentle mood leveling agent. A tranquility barrier for patients who seem incapable of dealing calmly. Well, this woman is apparently dealing with a child running through her house with a BB gun, and she also has one of these troublesome anxiety producing vacuum cleaners. This you may find shocking. Are you unhappy, stressed out, anxious about your pregnancy? Take a tranquilizer. This is how people get into, um, we get the thalidomide problem, right? Which was a sleeping pill that women took, that, well, lots of people took, but pregnant women who took thalidomide had children with extremely severe birth defects. Um, here they suggest that Milltown is completely safe. Later, say in 1970s and so, they will find out that people who took mil women who took Milltown in the first three months of pregnancy were far more likely to have children with birth defects. Oh, now she can cook breakfast again when she is taking whatever Mornadine is. Um, making coffee, frying up those that eggs and sausage. Fulfilling her housewifely duties. Now she can cope, thanks to butasol, <laughs> sodium butabarbital, a daytime sedative for everyday situational stress. For example, your children have literally tied you up. This woman is literally imprisoned by her children, but because she takes a sedative, and barbiturates are pretty strong said it is, she feels just fine. Mommy, play with me, mommy. Back from the brink with Pacatol. Again, this image of that in order to overcome um, however motherhood or being a housewife is getting you down, you need to medicate yourself in order to achieve a certain kind of social standard. Her kinds of pressures last all day, shouldn't her tranquilizer. It is so hard being a mother <laughs> that you basically need to be tranquilized from morning until night. And in case you just think that these are relics of the 50s and 60s and all that pre-feminist stuff, here is a more contemporary ad, magazine ad for Effexor. Again, the main benefit, it seems to be, of not being depressed here, of taking the antidepressant, is that it makes you a better mother. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tour of crazy ads, but I do want you to kind of see how there was this whole effort to 
for women to medicate themselves out of their problems or their dissatisfaction with gender roles in the 50s and 60s. Enjoy!